Continuing our impromptu Python 3 tutorial series, I'm going to be writing a text-based dungeon crawler. This game is going to be a bit more complex than the poker game we were previously working with, but we're going to be expanding on the same object-oriented ideas to create this game. We're just going to have more pieces, and we're going to try to approach it in an additive and modular way so each one of these objects we can create and test independently. To get started developing our game in Python 3, we're going to need to set up an environment. We can download Python and set things up locally, but I want this to be as easy to follow along as possible, so I'm going to be using the Replit Online Python 3 environment. You can go to Replit by going to browser R-E-P-L dot IT, and then go to the top right hand corner and select Python. Then you can create your REPL. Now that we have our REPL loaded, I'll quickly go over the interface. On top, you can log in and share your code. You can run the current document that's open or the current Python file. You have your history, which branch you're on, and then your main tools for your editor here on the left-hand side, like settings, debugger, packages, version control, and files. And we're not going to be using too many of those in this tutorial, but the main windows we're going to be using are here in the middle. We have our file browser, and anytime you select a file, you'll have it open in your editor window. And then here on the right-hand side, we have our active interpreter. The game we're going to be developing is going to be text-based, so we're going to be using this Python interpreter on the right quite a bit for input and output. As you can see on the top, it shows which version of Python 3 we're going to be running all of this in, which is 3.8.2. One of the first things I tend to do is stub in the code that I'm going to be using, which just means essentially writing the names and headings, maybe a couple comments in there, so I can kind of organize my thought in code form. And this is what I mean when I'm talking about just stubbing in these classes. I am just giving them a name, inheriting from object, the default object in Python, and I'm just setting an init that passes right now. So I'm literally just creating an object that doesn't do anything. But I wanted to have my first five objects that I needed, the dice, character, dungeon, city, and room objects here, so I can kind of see them and organize my code. The next thing I'm going to add is an import at the top, because I know I'm going to need random for my dice function. The dice object is going to be used throughout our code, and the class is going to be written in a unique way to take advantage of some features, so I think this would be a great place to start. First thing we're going to do is change the inheritance. Currently it's inheriting from object, which is Python's default blank object, and we want it to be fairly integer-like, so let's inherit from the int class. But int is also an immutable object, so we have to change what this first function is. Usually when we're creating a class, we initialize that class, which lets us set our different variables. Since this is already going to be an initialized class, we need to create a new instance of it. But think of the function as very similar in functionality. Most of the time, you're going to be using init. This case, we need to be using new. And we're going to be giving a variable size. And let's make that a class variable just by using self.size equals sides. And we need to add one more variable, which will be value. And let's make a method after this, get value. In the next line, we have to create that function we just used. It is a method, so we have to give it the class variable. And then from here, we just need it to return random rand range our number of sides and we have to add one to make it a little more real world because six sided dies have one through six instead of zero through five and programming usually starts at zero 
So this gives us our value, which returns our value up into there. And there's probably one other function we should add before testing this. And that would be our wrapper function. This is just what represents the object when you're looking at it in code. But instead of giving a memory address, this will give us something hopefully more useful so we can understand what we're actually looking at. And I'm just going to return the value. So when you look at a dice, you see what the value is on top of it. And I almost forgot one of the more important differences between new and init. New, you can return a value. So in this case, we're going to return our self.value. So now we can click run to load our module into the interpreter, import our module, and try rolling a six-sided die. And we're getting an error. It's saying get value needs self. Kind of odd, but let's try this. New to old Python 3.8 thing. So let's try this here. Import main, main.dice, roll a six-sided dice. Sweet, we got six. Let's test that and make sure we're actually getting a random value. Okay, so now we totally have a dice. But now I'm realizing that there's another feature I kind of want to add to make a fun little trick. Because if we run our dice and say we want to times it by three, right now we're actually getting an integer value and just times it by three, where I would really like to be able to roll three six-sided dice. So let's add that feature quickly. The first thing we're going to need to do is take another look at our return value from our new method. We're going to have to update it. So instead of just returning value, which is an integer, we want it to return a dice class object with the value of the integer we want. Which sounds a little confusing, and I apologize, this is probably the most verbose python -y line in this entire game but I do want to get it out there we're going to be doing super and we'll be passing a couple selves I'll be linking to the documentation to hopefully make this part a little clearer we're going to be running this new function in the dice class super essentially jumps up out of the class and then calls back into it and we're going to be passing the information we have from self and self.value. And now if we do this correctly, this should act the exact same way with one key difference. Do a three-sided die. Why not do something random? Oh yeah, and I have a print value in there in my get value so we can see each one uh, of the roles. Right now there's only one roll, so that totally makes sense. We get the value twice. And if we do this and save it as a variable, we can run type on it. And we can see that now instead of just getting an integer, we actually get a dice object back. This will allow us to add the multiplication function to add some cool functionality. So now that our dice class is returning a dice object, we can do something pretty cool for our dice rolling. We're wanting it so you can roll multiple dice of the same type, like three d20s at the same time, and add those values together. We're going to do this by overriding the multiplication function, which is dundermol in Python, M-U-L, and it takes two variables, self, and other, what you're multiplying it with, then we need to do something to keep track of the value. We might do something fancy and store these later, but for right now, I'm just going to have an integer which is total and started at zero each time the functions run. Then for each die in range other, we're assuming it's an integer, we might have to do some error checking on that at some point, we get a value for the die. Well, 
let's print that value just sanity check it that way we can see it when we're running the code and then let's increment our total with that value so it will essentially roll the die that many times and add the values together now that we have our total we want to keep it as our fancy dice object so the easiest way to do that here is just to update our value to our total and return self we can test this quickly run our code import main and we can see our dice is working we're getting our values and our total our total is making sense and yeah we're getting the right values so this is cool but if we want to reverse this in any way so let's try this three times you're going to see that everything we're getting is a multiple of three let's make this a little easier with smaller numbers here and the way to fix this is to add an armol function but instead of adding a whole nother function we can do a quick trick here so we can do dunder armol for right multiply equals dunder mole in this case now when we run it we have our dice we can run multiple of the same dice and we can run multiple of the same dice the other direction there's one last feature I want to add to this dice class and that's the ability to choose the highest or the lowest set of dice that were rolled this is common in tabletop games where you might roll five dice and choose the highest three or the lowest three values so the easiest way we could do that would be add two more functions so def highest and def lowest but it also means we're going to have to change a few things up here we're going to have to add another value so values I'll make that an empty list for now and when we're down here we're going to have to add them to that list of values make sure I clear the list every time and then down here self dot values dot append because I'm appending to the list my new value we can get rid of our print statement for now and we're no longer using total to get our new value we're going to get the sum of self dot values and this will add them all together get our new value and return self now we're ready to take a look at our new functions first thing I want to do is make sure they accept a variable I'm just going to call that num and in here we have to do self dot values dot sort and that will essentially put them in order then we can take that list self dot values and slice it so if it's highest we want to take the end of this so to the end negative number go that many back and then take it to the end and on the other one we want to do the opposite we want to take from the beginning to that number 
now we want to take a sum of those values and return it. So we're going to take self.value and make that equal to our new sum in both of these. Then we're going to return self. Let's take this for a quick test spin. So let's run the code, import it. Our dice is working. That's awesome. Now we want to times that by five. That's working. Save that as some variable. X is 10, and that should stay as 10. But we should be able to now x dot highest and get the highest three values. So it essentially dropped two of the dice rolls. Same thing, we should be able to, let's save new x, x dot lowest and take the lowest three dice rolls. I'm going to do one more quick sanity check by printing the list of values before I do this. And I'll copy that into both of these, which will just let me sanity check and make sure these values are coming out the way I'm expecting. Run through the same thing, save it as a variable, and then x dot highest three. And that checks out, same thing. Let's save a new x, and then check for the lowest three. Yep, and that totally checks out. Last step is clean up these print statements and get this code ready to deploy. As always, the code will be available down in the description, and I'm also going to be adding a link to a Discord channel I'm using for questions and answers. I'll be trying to respond in the comments, but sometimes it takes me a little longer. Thank you again, and in the next part we're going to be getting a little more into the game mechanics. This first part of the tutorial series, getting into the dice, is a little more programmy feeling than the rest of it or at least what I'm hoping the rest of it's going to be like.